Um, I do want to encourage people to send in questions to the question line, and we will go over these at the end of uh, Dr. De Felipe's presentation, and he will delve more into exosomes for hair. Good morning, America. Good afternoon, Turkey, and good afternoon from Spain. Well, thank you very much for your information. I think we've learned a lot with your presentations, and especially about the composition and the way that we can obtain different exosomes. This presentation is about a particular work that we've done in the past two years about the use of exosomes in androgenetic alopecia. So we all know how exosomes are obtained from adipocyte stem-derived cells. And we know more or less the composition of these uh, exosomes. There are many, many different substances and molecules inside these exosomes. There is a list of about 800 or more growth factors, proteins, DNA products that are interacting with different structures and cells in the body. We were very interested on seeing what happened with these um, exosomes in androgenetic alopecia, because we have to determine exactly what happened. We had to create a reliable study, and this study had to be approved by ethical committees of a hospital. We also had to measure results, and Dr. Duncan was very right. It's very important to measure exactly what we can obtain with these exosomes. And obviously, if we want to validate our results, the patients have to be randomized and controlled. So we decided to recruit 120 patients. All of these were studied and taking pictures and trachea tests, and they received the standard treatment that today is given to all patients with androgenetic alopecia. This is dutasteroid daily at a dose of 0.5 milligrams and minoxidil orally, five milligrams per day. These patients followed this treatment for a year. All these patients were randomly assigned to one of these following three groups. The first group, the C group, which is the control group that received injections of six milliliters of sea line. There were six sessions performed during six months. That means that every month we had an infiltration. A second group of 40 patients received a PRP, and the PRP was injected and diluted in 6 ml. The third group was the exosome. The exosome that we used was the adipocyte-derived stem cell exosomes from Exco Company. The patients selected for the study were all male. They were all over 18 years old, and they were under grade five of Hamilton Norwood grade, because we thought that we needed to see the results and patients that were too bored were not eligible for the study. All patients were healthy and had no conditions and no treatments before the test that they joined. This is a scheme of the study, 120 patients divided randomly in three groups. Group C, which is the control, group PRP, which is the PRP, the growth factor, and the exosome group. The patients received exactly the same treatment and the injector did not know what was contained in the syringe that we infiltrated, nor did the patient. So the study was in a way randomly, was controlled and was double blind. We had to select patients under grade five Hamilton Norwood, because if patients are too bold, we considered that there could be very little reaction and response to the treatment. Patients that had been treated before with any other treatment were excluded. Female patients did not participate in the study. High Norwood grade were also excluded from the study. Patients taking any other kind of medication or having chronic diseases were also excluded. The measurements that we took were pictures, the count of hairs in an area of 63 square millimeters, the count of hairs in an area of two square centimeters, the doctors and the patient's opinion, and we also measured the adverse events. 
This is one of the first results. This is a patient following a six month treatment with the oral treatment plus PRP. This is a 31 year old patient. The picture on the left is the after and the picture on the right is the before. And you can see a very interesting growth of hair, especially in the front area. This is another patient belonging to the control group. He only received the infiltrations with c line and the oral treatment with dutastride and minoxidil. We can see a slight increase. The before picture is on the left side and the after on the right side. You can see another picture, 12 months after the treatment. He belongs to the control group, so he just received C-line. He's a 37-year-old patient with a slight increase of hair. Here you have another patient following the PRP. He's 39 years old, and there is a clear increase in the density of hair. This is another patient of the control group. And here you have a patient with the exosome group. He's 34 years old. After one year, you can see a very interesting and important growth of hair, especially in the vertex area. Here you can see another patient receiving exosome. He's a 27 year old guy. There's another picture of the same guy. And you can see before on the left and after on the right with an advance in the frontal hairline. Here is another patient that received the PRP a year afterwards. He's 49 years old with a small response to the treatment. This is another patient receiving the exosome with a very important growth of density after six months. Here you can see another patient, 42 years old, another patient belonging to the control group, and this one receiving the exosome group six months after the treatment. Another patient, 42 years old, receiving the exosome group after one year. Another patient, six months after treatment with PRP. So you can see different responses. All patients improved, obviously, but the improvement seems to be more important in patients receiving the exosomes. This is the way we measured. We took a rule and with a small microscope, we decided to take pictures. These pictures were nine millimeters time, times seven. So the total area was 63 square millimeters. The pictures taken with that were these. So all the hairs were counted. For example, in the picture on the left side, you can count 132 hairs, whereas on the right side, you can count 156. The problem with this way of measuring is that we don't differentiate between, between thick hairs and small hairs, because one of the problems with androgenetic alopecia is the thickening or the miniaturization of the hair. So that is why we also used another system. This is also the 63 square millimeters. But we also used the density of two square centimeters, which is measured by a trico scan by a machine. And we could see that you can see in the control group that there was a baseline number of hairs of 116, whereas after one year, there is an increase up to 135. Whereas the, in the exosome group on the right side, there's an increase from 122 to 153. So if you apply some statistical analysis, you see that there is a very strong statistical difference between the baseline and the 12 months in both groups, but also between the control group and the exosome. If you measure the density of hairs in this smaller area and you count them manually, you can also see that the control group goes from 49 to 62, whereas the exosome goes from 51 to 69. So the difference is statistically significant from baseline to 12 months, but also between control and exosome. When we assessed the pictures through investigators and patients, and we asked them whether they were improving or not, right, we could see that the scale 
which was revealed by investigators, was very significant as well. So patients at six, sorry, investigators at six months gave this scale of 215, whereas at 12 months, it was 175. Whereas with exosome, there was an increase from 155 to 148. Also with patients, they found that the improvement was very significant. And there was a statistical difference between control and exosomes. This is the same result in graphs. You can see how in baseline, there's a slight difference between the control and the exosome, but both groups increased where exosome increases more significantly up to 154. Here you can see the measurement in the smaller photographs taken and measuring the hairs in the area of 63 squared millimeters. So you can see in the control group an increase from 49 hairs to 62, whereas in the exosome group, the increase was from 51 to 69. And this was statistically significant. As per adverse events report, there is a very slow, a very low rate of different problems. Some patients refer reduced libido, but as you can see, there is no difference between the control patients and the exosome or the PRP. In conclusion, we think that exosomes that are given by injections in the scar improve androgenetic alopecia. They result in better improvement in comparison to control and to PRP. They respond better in younger people and they have a very low adverse event profile. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. DeFilippe. Those were fabulous results, pretty amazing. I, I thought, found it interesting that your statistics seemed a little bit less convincing than the clinical outcomes. How did you measure, um, and when you did your measurements, how did you make sure you were in the exact same place where you took your uh, initial measurements or baseline? Well, we measured uh, the same point, which was located three centimeters behind the frontal hairline to make sure that we were measuring more or less the same area. But as you mentioned, uh, Diane, it's very difficult to measure exactly the number of hairs because as you know, um, androgenetic alopecia is not about losing a number of hairs, but it's about the thinning of hairs. Uh, not all the systems that we follow can measure it. It's very difficult, not only it's difficult to measure the number of hairs, but it's even more difficult to measure the thickness of hairs. Right, that's where I use that particular system that I do because it will measure and characterize the term, you know, the terminal hairs or the, the very fine hairs. And so for me, the value in a measurement is that of the thicker terminal hairs. Mm -hmm.